Hey guys, and welcome back to uh, Mega Basing 101. And I'm up here with Mojo, and Zuri is doing some landfilling uh, just below us. Greetings. And, uh, and yeah, so Zuri's cleaning up those lakes, giving us a little bit more room, and uh, we are here to move the circuit build as you place robo ports that are just about to be torn up. I got the bots ready, and they are really excited. Oh man, here we go. Hopefully, I got a blueprint. Hey. You did get a blueprint, didn't you? That'd be embarrassing if you didn't. <laughs> I did, just as long as I don't delete it. I've done that before. <laughs> All right, so as we mentioned last time, we are moving this. Of course, I don't know where. We've got to move one tile down to bring it aligned with the track. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where it's going to be centered on the train. I guess the station will determine that. So that's probably okay. Yeah, so it just needs to be aligned to the track for now. It connects to the smelter thing, which is fine. Alright, so there's that one. Then I'm going to spin it around. And another important thing, I know we've mentioned this before, but say it again. Um, I'm lining up with the robo ports when I flip it to the other side rather than the beacons, because if you line up the beacons, then the robo ports won't line up. And I think that's more noticeable than the beacons not lining up. And the build also won't line up either. That too. So place him there. And away go the bots. They're all they're all excited. Woohoo! I think we're still missing materials, but oh, more than likely. One of the reasons why I chose the odd train count also is because it makes it an even tile count symmetry. Hmm. Yeah, that's a very very good point. Yeah, uh, that goes back to the demonstration we did last time. Yeah, and the different tile If lengths. I understand that, what you mean? Yep. You left. Trains being seven tiles long. Mm -hmm. Six and then a half either side. Ooh, hello, bot. You left a bot behind. Yeah, there's you go. Alright. He's useful. I have some furnaces. I could place those down. Um, so while we're doing this, uh, we also want to start running some rails in and build the stacker. And obviously the circuits are not going here, but that's a blueprint now. Although it has no... no... Apparently I'm putting modules in too. Oh, that works. Even though it's not a high, high priority. We, uh, we're missing requesters and providers at these train stations for the circuits though. Might want to do that before we blueprint it. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, so, last time we kind of left you with a, a bit of a cliffhanger on uh, another thing Mojo had written down worth discussing that you guys had commented on in a previous episode. So I suppose we could discuss that now while we're building this uh, because it's uh, probably something that should be addressed. It's one of the most controversial topics. It's highly discussed. Yeah, and I guess before we get in this, we should say, <laughs> just reiterate that it's your game. Play it how you want. Just because we don't agree with something does not mean that it's the wrong way to do it. It is just in our experience and our personal opinion. Yeah, certainly every game I've seen it, it, um, it actually didn't work out that well. It had problems. Yeah, so the the thing we're, we're going to discuss here is uh, previously, in a previous episode, someone discussed or, or mentioned... We're not stalling or anything, are we? No, nope, no. Nope. Quit hanging. <laughs> uh, someone said that... Uh, they suggest well they suggested or said why are we not doing on-site smelting like having smelting at our ore patches and it was discussed actually quite extensively in the comments tons and tons of replies and discussion back and forth but uh we figured we would share our opinion and experience because i mean the person kind of did directly ask why we're not doing that and uh some other people were kind of back and forth so it's a good question and i actually wondered if we all had different ideas on the on the subject hmm. Yeah, it turns out we all do have different ideas on it. Yeah, which is pretty interesting. So you guys can go ahead and start. Yeah, I consider the most annoying thing with doing it that way is the train micro. The the amount of control you have to do for your trains and then tearing down and rebuilding your entire smelter every single time you do a new outpost is just too much of a pain. Yeah, that w it's um, a huge pain having to... Because you would need a huge train just to carry all those um, smelters and then if modules, belts or bots, everything. That'd be a huge um, 
uh, undertaking. Uh, mine was actually more about the logistics of moving the plate to all the different builds. Um, so, and this is more for this style of map, but, uh, and again, it would vary if, if you had everything going into a central brick type um, bot base or a belt base. But in every game I've seen, it, it there's, it's distributed across multiple builds. Um, so if you have 10, say, copper outposts, you need to get all of that copper plate delivered reliably to all of the different destinations. So green circuits, red circuits, low density structures, and so on. And which is, I see that as a, an N by M problem. So you have many sources into many destinations, which again does lead into the train micromanagement. And you need to very tightly control what trains go where. And because mining degrades over time or the output degrades over time, you have to continuously adjust it. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say those are very good points. And I, I agree. And it even um, escalates to kind of a, a more annoying and more complicated thing if you do even, even more than that, your outpost. Because I saw some people mention like that they actually do like everything on a per outpost basis like they'll have uh you know if there's two like an iron and copper patch next to each other or something they'll not only do the smelting but also like make their circuits and do like red and green science there or something and that just brings it to an even like higher level of the issues we uh, they mentioned because you know then when the outpost dries up you have to move not only your smelting but also your circuit production and your science production and and that's quite an endeavor yeah um actually on the note of the circuit one that have it been in a few games where that worked really well and those were actually where we specifically needed circuits um and the, actually the best map where it worked was one of colonel will's map where they're trying to increase rocket production to overcome chaos dispenser mm. um and yeah that's it worked well there because the map was time limited and so the circuit production um or the mining wasn't likely to run out before the map itself ended or the conditions of the map ended yeah and if that's your uh if that's your situation then it really may not be that bad but uh considering that this is a mega base and instruction for going to a mega base um we would assume that you would not uh, be in a situation where you know you plan to end the map fairly shortly yeah so and i'm sure certain people like playing the train made a game and they might enjoy it more than we would and if that's your, and that's the case go for it oh yeah I, and i do have actually a counter example which was actually one of your um sub server maps where there was a dedicated smelting um and what happened was the base ran out of green circuits and it was nearly impossible to recover from it because um, the green circuit outpost had run started running dry and there wasn't enough circuits to go around anymore. It did recover eventually, but it took a lot of work. Yeah, it takes a lot of work. It wasn't fun. And that was the main thing. And uh, my argument, which is different yet again, <laughs> um, is that on top... Trying to line this damn train station up. Um, on top of everything else, uh, doing the uh, on-site smelting and then even more so anything past that at your ore patch is um, okay. <laughs> is a uh, is a huge problem for if you're using bots um, for bots and if you're using well, I can't even imagine doing it with belts. That just sounds like an utter mess. But this, this doesn't I, this is really annoying <laughs> because the center is in the tile boundary and the center of the train is in the middle of a cell right so it's either going to be long by a tile or short by a tile well this isn't even close so I'm trying to line this okay let me let me if i like back up the train um but anyway if you're doing with bots yeah. it becomes even more of a problem uh, for bots because you're having to like move the ore not only across all of the ore patch but also to the smelters and then from the smelters to you know your trains leaving or whatever and unless you do some like insane like micro 
arrangement, uh, it's probably going to be all one network, which is just the size of that. And the bots going back and forth and cross travel and stuff is just going to be absolutely horrible for uh, performance at this scale. If you're doing a smaller scale, again, that problem may not exist quite as much. Um, but that's kind of our counter arguments for uh, doing the on-site smelting and why we, uh, we do not like to do it. Is yeah, and it actually leads, well, with the logistics one, it leads to the next point. Uh, why not send it back to a dedicated central distribution point? And at that point, you ask the question, what's the difference between, say, a distribution point and just having a central smelter? Yeah, exactly. Some people may do like a plate bunker or something to bring their plate from the outposts in. And uh, Jerry said it quite nicely that just why not just put a smelter where your plate bunker is and you've achieved the same thing. Yeah. In saying that, I actually have been thinking about trying that one day just to see what happens. It's something that's still on my to-do list. Mm. It's been it, on my to-do list since like the end of last year. It might work well if you have uh, segregated train networks. Like you have your outpost network that smelts at the outpost and moves it to a central bunker. And then that's the join point between the inner and outer systems. That's true. But that's not how I usually see it implemented. I see it implemented really haphazardly, where they're just uh, there's a bunker somewhere inside of the train network that a lot of random trains go to. Yep. So, uh, do we want to do? We could do the same size circuit trains. Uh, we'd pr I'll probably just cap the cargo wagons to like half capacity. That would work. I was actually thinking too, we, um, because of the tight spacing, there's not enough room for requesters and providers for both sides, but we could do some of the calculations we've already done pre demonstrated previously and done previously to show that you don't actually need to completely entomb the output train in inserters. That is a very good point. So we could go ahead and, uh, and yeah, do that now. Um, so pretty much all you need to do for that is uh, we just need the numbers on how much uh, circuits this one build will output and how much iron and copper it'll take in. And the uh, Barry Kuhn calculator should tell us all that except for how much this one build will output specifically. I highly recommend um, like going to creative mode and measuring it manually though. Yeah. Yeah, because um, when a build the difference, there's always a difference between what a build um, actually produces versus what it's calculated. Uh, which actually, that does actually raise an interesting point because there's a lot of people that uh, swear by certain builds which they've calculated out but never actually properly validated. Yeah, that validation step is essential for both in game and in real life for any kind of engineering. Mm hmm. Validation is actually a engineering term for those that don't know. It's design and validate. Hmm. So, if we, um, what well, we, we can just do, because the inserters don't have to be quite as exact as, like, the actual, like, amount of assemblers or anything like we did. So we yeah. can probably do calculations here just for the inserters because it's not going to be exact anyway. Like there's no way it's going to end up where, you know, exactly X amount of inserters moves exactly the amount we need. So it's probably going to be more, but it would be worth calculating. I, I think of it more as a guideline. So you, so you calculate out what exactly what the bare minimum you need is and then work from there. Mm -hmm. So you could, cause you're going to need more unloading than the bare minimum. Otherwise, um, you basically need a train unloading con continuously. There's no slack time. It, like the train needs to unload faster than the build operates. Otherwise, the build will stop as soon as the train leaves. Exactly. So, um, I know you have the numbers pulled up for how much iron and copper the circuits take, and we could probably just divide that by two to get how much one build will take. Uh, yeah, we need two of these, don't we, or one? Or is no, this we need two of these. Okay. So in that case, there's 
37,339 iron plate required total. Okay, so... So half of that. We take half of that, which gives us, let's just say 18,700, or not 700, 18,670, I think is what I got. Yep. And now to know how many inserters we need, an insert, a stack inserter, full stack size bonus, which we should have, it looks like. I'd be worried if we didn't. Yeah. Um, at full stack size moves 27.7 items a second. So we just take the 18,670, divide it by, um, well, you'll probably want to divide it by 60 first to get a per second rate since the inserters are per second, or you could multiply the inserter movement speed by 60 to make it a per minute rate, one or the other, because you're, you're going to need them to be at the same, at the same, uh, like base. Yeah. You need the, the time in the same unit. Yeah. So that's 311. Let's just say 312, always round up. 312 items a second. 27.7. So I get like 11.2. 11.2 inserter, so just bump that up to 12. Yeah, which you can't really do from three wagons because, or five wagons, because you would require different amounts on some, which would just completely screw things up because someone wouldn't be unloaded as fast and then the train would sit here and you'd run out. Yeah, so, well, 12 divided by 5, that's 2.4 inserters per wagon, so round up again, that's 3. Yeah, so that should be more than enough, and that brings us back to the point you made, Mojo, that this will certainly unload faster than the build is consuming it. Uh, so now... That means if I was to put these down for demonstration purposes, that's three there. And that leaves room for one, two, three, and one, two, three. But do we need six on the output? So what does calculating the output produce? So we ha we know we need at least three on the each of the unloads, or we don't actually know what copper is yet, because copper will probably should need more. But we should calculate the output to know how many we need to um, to load the train. Right. Um, so, pretty much the same thing. Now, these take an iron... The, it, we should need more for the load because um, they take an iron plate in, um, but they have productivity, so they're actually going to output more than one, which means that it's going to be outputting more than the iron it consumes, essentially. Yeah, um, with a productivity bonus. Mm, yeah. So, if we have a... So 29, 5, 6, 8 I get for how much the build produces in circuits. Okay. There's 32 assembly machines. Uh, I hang on. I didn't do the thing again. Oh, the... Yep. Oh, I just forget the 14, 15s. Hmm. That's 27,596.8. 27,956, okay. And then we want to divide that by 60 to get a per second rate. Yep, or divide by 1,659, which is a 27 point... Well, that was 27.65, but... Because um, can insist... Uh, gave me an extra digit of precision, but 27.7 is fine for the most part. Like we're only looking for just some rough numbers to give us a, to to sort of center in. So we're drawing a sort of a the outermost boundary condition, and then we're just going to sort of circle into what we eventually want. So we're finding our boundaries and then bringing it in to what's actually needed. Designing's fun. It is. So. I've uh, taken that divided by 60, which gave me 465.9, and I've divided that by 27.7, which gave me 16.8. Yep, I have numbers that more or less agree. I actually have 16.6, but I did the 27.65. Right, okay. So, um... Either way, it's 17. 17, and we have five cargo wagons, 
again, same deal we had with the iron, so we'll want to round up. If we did uh, four inserters per, that would give us 20 inserters, which would probably be, uh, I mean, it's more than we need, which is, is a good thing. Yeah. So we know that we need four, so we don't need necessarily need six. The other thing is you don't need a lot more because that's as fast as a build can go. So you don't need much more beyond um, the four because like the fifth and sixth one will just never do anything. Yeah, exactly. But, or they will at the initially, but then they'll just stop. Right. Um, now, looking at this, we do not... So if I pull those off... Oh, you... I'm just marking them with fast inserters. So we know we have three on this unload. We're going to need at least three... If this one on the bottom was iron, this one's a circuit load in the center. So we know we need at least four here. We need at least three here. And copper plate, we know we're going to need at least three be because it has more mm. uh, demand than iron plate. Um, so now we need to work out sort of the boundary of what we need for copper plate. But you can sort of see how it's coming together. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, yet again, the same thing. Uh, and, I mean, yeah, we'll be higher, I think, because we are consuming more copper. Ah, this one gets more interesting because it says it in terms of copper cable. Oh, right. I remember that. Yeah, so it is 112,017.32. Uh, so we're halving it. So it's 56,008 copper wire per build. Now we've got to do the... Um, oh, it's still only in the morning. Yeah, this is, it's complicated because then not only are you getting extra from the productivity you're also getting a base of two per craft. Yeah, so you need to divide it by two again. So that's 28,000 uh, copper plate my, uh, before allowing for productivity. And if I get that right, as I say, it's too early in the morning. Um, that's 20,003 copper plate per minute. Because you divided that by 1.4 for the productivity, right? Yeah. And then we do the same deal again with the inserters calculation. Meanwhile, I like to cut the Gordian knot and just build it in creative or something and test it. Oh, yeah. But this is, um the long-handed way. Yeah, it's pretty instructive to, to teach how to do it. And people may hate this, but uh, spreadsheets are your friends. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, we're not actually building much right now, and maybe not haven't for the majority of this episode, but again, that, you know, we're trying to teach principles that will that, that will allow, carry you through, you know, kind of yeah. the, the age-old saying, you know, like, if you teach a man to fish rather than if you just fish for him. I know that's extremely paraphrasing, but showing you how to do these calculations and how we arrive at these numbers in these builds uh, is a very important step so that you can take that information and create your own builds and do your own calculations. The lead on from this is also in some of the previous games, it's like, oh, you need, no, you, you need more inserters on this, like the smelting or this build to make it go faster. But like we've shown with the calculation on the output, you, four inserters is more than enough to load a train um, to keep the build running. Yeah, and doing more is actually just going to hurt your game performance and won't actually gain you anything. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, there's a few games where people, I remember a few people kept saying, um, oh, you need to surround it with inserters. And yeah, it just doesn't work like that. No. Unfortunately. So. So this is why this build, this particular arrangement works. Unfortunately, this v v way this one works um, requires a bit more in-depth uh, calculation. It's actually something I'm fairly new to as well. So how many inserters does the copper plate need? Um, I got 12-ish. Well, like 12.03, but again, same deal as the others. So if we round up to three per, that's 15, which should be enough excess to 
We could do four. Okay, there is so room still for three. four if we want. Act like I would do four. I would, in fact, I would probably do four for both. Yeah, because doing three is a bit excess, but that still would require pretty darn high uh, train throughput uptime, which you may not yeah. be able to achieve. That's where it comes back to what we were saying. Um, we set, establish the boundary sort of outline and then say, okay, here's what we've got. What can we, how can we improve on that? Yeah, let's say you need, what, three inserters per wagon to keep it active 100%. If you double that to six, then you only need to train there, what, half the time, 50%? And yeah. the max would be 25% of the time you need to train there. And you can, based off the max capacity of the train, you can then figure out how often you need to train in and out of the system. Yeah, exactly. Um and I know people may be wondering, and people may comment, well, you know, we're just back to, like, four per and stuff. You know, couldn't you have avoided all this, like, 15 minutes calculations and just reduce the amount by two? It's like, well, but we, we the, the point is we didn't know we needed to do that. That's why this yeah, is important. Yeah, that's sort of shooting in the dark. Yeah, if you're just like, well, sure, I'll just assume I need to reduce it by this much or just assume that six is fine then that's when you end up with these discrepancies that cause issues throughout the rest of the base. So I do, I yeah. assume you have no, no logistics chests on you. No, I use them all. Damn. I have none either. Um, but, uh, also a, a good, um, another good practice here is, uh, when you, when you do place these chests, I have none as well. Um, but you want to make sure that the chests, however many there may be, depending on what, you know, the build and stuff, that all the chests um, combined can hold a full wagon worth. Yeah, at the very least. Maybe I, I'm inclined to say two wagons worth, just to make sure it builds up enough to allow for any irregularities in trains. Yeah, that is very true. And then also just to make sure that the train can fully unload into these if they were empty. Um, yeah. So I've, I've done two stacks per because that is, uh, or two rows rather, because that is eight rows total. A cargo wagon is four, so that is two entire trains worth of capacity here, or two wagons rather, and then the whole thing will be two trains. You could actually go through the whole calculation again, and that could tell you how long the build will run for if it was theoretically full. Yep. So these calculations Homework. pretty much apply everywhere. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't. We don't want to actually use fast inserters here, though. Yeah, we want stack inserters. It's because I was out of stack <laughs> inserters. <laughs> out of everything. Uh, I don't. We're probably in about time, I think. Yeah, another another episode done of just us talking. But that's what you come here for. Yeah, that. But I think next time is going to be um, a lot of building, watching us build instead of uh, calculation. We're actually going to execute yep. it. Yep. And yeah. Finally. Finally. I've got a lot of grass fish you might want to check out down here. Oh, yeah. Oh, there are a ton of grass fish. Oh, yeah. Let's go down. Oh, map view it. There's a little grass fishy. Fishy, fishy, fishy. Now, I expect this to uh, conform with the rest oh, of the uh, shore, one. right? <laughs> Say what again? Is this going to be left a straight line, or are you going to terraform it to make it look real-ish? I don't know yet. I'll probably just leave it straight lines. It's okay, I'll just look yeah. at the smelters. Given that it's desert, um, sur it's surrounded by desert, it's pretty <laughs> obvious that it was landfilled. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I believe that'll do it, you know episode of talking again but it was important information and as murder said next time we'll be pretty much entirely building because now we have this figured out we'll do some work off camera like get this build entirely fleshed out and stuff and uh then we'll start placing stuff doing some track do a stacker and uh, and get things moving yeah on the plus side also the solar's finished building Woohoo! that's actually something that's been slowly building off camera yeah that's actually a huge accomplishment that's solar because now we're finally not running out of power every night. Mm. 
We will need to expand it, though. In fact, we should probably start pre-expanding it, because we're going to need a way more power than this. Hopefully we can get rid of those iron patches before too long. We might need to do some landfilling down there just to stretch out the where it hasn't quite blueprinted. I kind of don't... I, one thing that actually I don't like is landfilling out huge bodies of water for solar. I hate that. Yeah. I don't know why people do that. Oh, artificial islands. Yeah, I definitely... That's a pet peeve of mine as well. All right. Well, I think we're going to call it there. Um, we will see you guys next time. We hope you enjoyed. Leave any thoughts, questions you have down in the comments, and we will catch you later. Later. See you next time.